The Lord be with you. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. The Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will have with you always, and whenever you wish you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And there he prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, This very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. 
he advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left a cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will rebuild another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the (laughs) courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were there with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the other court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, The man is the one. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are the one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man, what whom you are talking about. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. 
Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release you to the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lema, Sapakthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Let us kneel. Let us stand. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him 
saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James, and of Jesus, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. Then it was already evening. Since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who's himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, watched where he had laid. The Gospel of the, the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Christ. I've been blessed to go to the Holy Land two different times. One time by myself, did some exploring. The second time, went with a tour group. We had 28 of us that went. And we visited many holy sites there in the Holy Land. Uh, one of those that made the most impression on me in that moment was the uh, Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus uh, went into the garden to pray. We heard the story today. The disciples couldn't stay awake. Peter, are you sleeping? Can you not wait with me one hour? In another gospel, it talks about he was so stressful that he'd sweat drops of blood. And we've had mass on that particular rock, went back in the evening, had a holy hour. And in that moment, what really came to me, that comes to me again today, is the reality of Jesus' humanity. He was fully human. Yes, he was fully divine, but he's fully human. And imagine this, yourself. It's Palm Sunday, and you're riding into Jerusalem on a colt, and everyone around you is waving palms, and they're throwing their cloaks on the ground. Hosanna praises to the king. And as a human, wouldn't you have this emotion? Yay, they finally get it. I've been telling them for three years that I'm the one. They got it. And a few days later, they crucify him. What would that be like? What would that be like as a human? In the garden, and I'll read the passage because this is fantastic. Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me. But not what I will, but what you will. Translated a modern language. Lord, I can't take it. Fix it. But I guess if you can't fix it, I'll do it. The reality is, you and I, just like Jesus in our humanity, right? We come up against challenges. We come up against the world. We come up against suffering. We have joy. We have peace. We have happiness. We have relationships that are great. We might have relationships that are terrible. These are very human things. And there are probably times in our life when we go, I can't handle it. And there are probably times in our life when we just brush it off. We take our faith and we put it someplace else. You know, that doesn't apply to me when I'm at work. That doesn't apply to me when I'm watching a football game or a basketball game. That doesn't apply to me when I'm on vacation. I don't need to go to Mass. And we just push it off. Do we really listen to God's will for our lives? 
these last 40 days or so that we've been in Lent. What's this time for? This time is for us to prepare to deepen our relationship with God, to understand that we need to, what do we do? We pray, we give alms, we fast, and we do all those things to open a place in our bodies, open a place in our hearts, open a place in our beings, open a place in our life for Jesus Christ to enter in so that we might have relationship that's deeper, that's stronger. So we hear God's voice and then respond just like Jesus did. Your will be done. Maybe you've had a really good Lent. Maybe you've not done anything for Lent. Maybe some things you've done, some things you've not. It's a new day. It's Palm Sunday. It's the beginning of Holy Week, the holiest week of the year. I invite you into this week. Experience God's love in this moment. Experience. Look at it. See the suffering that Jesus did for us. He carried his cross so we wouldn't have to carry that one. He died for our sins so that we might go to heaven and have eternal life. Spend some time reflecting on that. You know, one of the beautiful things about this gospel, the way it says it, is here's Jesus, and he cries out to the Father again, why have you forsaken me? He's still very human, but he also knows he has to do it. Why? For you and I. And in that moment, when he dies on the cross, and he gives his last breath, it's this meeting of humanity and divinity like it's never met before. The curtain in the temple is torn from top to bottom. And the Holy of Holies is no longer separated. Why? Because the Savior has come. We, you and I, can have personal relationship with God. It's like no other day. And then he's in the tomb, and we'll talk about that this week. And then on Easter morning, we give glory, praise that he is risen. As a gift to us, he's given us salvation. So that if we receive that gift and live that gift, then at the end of our lives, just like at the end of Jesus's, divinity and humanity meet again. But this time it's for you and I. And our mortal bodies is gone, but our heavenly soul goes to heaven and spends eternity with Christ. I invite you this week to enter in. If you've not done anything, now's the time. Don't wait. Our humanity says, oh, there's always time. There's not. We don't know the minute. We don't know the hour. Enter in. If you've gone to confession, beautiful. If you've not and you want to, or if you've not and you need to, or if you've not, maybe it's just time to, go to confession this week, Wednesday evening, 4.30, here in confessions before the 5.15 Mass. Saturday, we'll be hearing confessions from 4 o'clock until there's nobody to hear confessions. Today, 12.30, Father Carlos will be in the confessional. Come to confession. Get those sins wiped away so in this moment, this most holiest of week, you can enter deeper into this relationship with God. Holy Thursday, come, 7 p.m. Spanish here, English at St. James. Come, experience the celebration of the Last Supper, the first Mass. Again, where divinity and humanity meet, Jesus gives of his body and his blood to the apostles that you and I get to receive at every Mass. Good Friday, 3 o'clock, Stations of the Cross, here and at St. James. Come, walk the stations. Reflect on what Jesus did for us. 
after the stations. It's Divine Mercy Novena for the following Sunday, which is Divine Mercy Sunday. His divine mercy that he pours out on us from the cross, they spoke his side and blood and water come out. That's his divine mercy. His blood that wash away our sins, the water that baptizes us, taking original sin away. Wow. Pray each day with those praying at 3 o'clock for the Divine Mercy Novena. If you've never been to an Easter vigil, this is the year. Make a commitment. We have 15 or 16 people coming into the church. Four of them have never been baptized. They'll be coming in on an Easter vigil. It's a beautiful way for us to enter into this moment of the light of Christ coming to the world, bringing us his salvation. When the joy of Easter really takes on a, a beautiful reality, especially for us as we witness those 15 who get to receive the Eucharist for the first time. What a beautiful way to enter in. Invite your friends. Invite your families. If you know someone that hasn't been to church in a while, call them up. Invite them. Go by and pick them up. It'll be the blessed blessing you can give to them. They'll thank you for it. Why? Because just like Jesus, sometimes we need to step out of our comfort zone. Sometimes we need to do things that challenge us or make us suffer or make us pain and put us in pain to do the right thing to further salvation for another person. That's who we are as Christians. That's why we come to Mass. As we pray together, as we sing together, as we wave palms together, as we come up to this table where we receive his body and blood, again, divinity and humanity meeting, we take the Eucharist and we let it change us. We let it deepen our relationship with our Father. That is what Easter is about. That is what Holy Week is for. That is the gift that God has given us of himself through the sacraments, through the word, through each other, and through the church. I invite you to fully enter in, to develop that relationship with Jesus Christ that changes all of us.